Hello and welcome to Brahma's Notes. Today we are going to look at the ionic theory and this is the fourth video on this topic. So this ionic theory is actually the core of this topic and once we grasp this concept, electrolysis is likely to be a walkover. So we shall be dealing with this kind of setup as we had seen it in previous videos whereby we always have our direct current supply we have our switch we have the cathode which is negatively charged and it's always connected to the negative terminal which is the shorter one this side we have the positive terminal and it's always connected as well to our anode which is positively charged we are always having our electrolyte which is the substance under investigation and in most cases it will be a liquid either molten or in solution form so let us see what we mean by the ionic theory so the first point to note is that whenever we complete our circuit and for that to be possible that is by closing the switch then the process of electrolysis will begin. Remember electrolysis is basically the process of breaking down an electrolyte whenever we pass electric current through it. So the first step is closing the switch. Then we have the second point during the process, the law of electricity will have to take place or it will have to act. And it states that like charges repel and unlike charges attract one thing to note about this setup is that our electrolyte in most cases we shall be having ionic compounds dissolved in our solution and ionic compounds are well known for having positive ions and negative ions with them so at that point we shall see that like charges will repel and unlike charges will attract we shall mainly emphasize this last part, unlike charges, attract. So when you look at our setup here, we have some negatively charged ions. This could be chloride ions. And then we have positively charged ions as well. This could be, for example, sodium ions. So what happens is that our anode is positively charged. That means it is electron deficient so it's positively charged it has very many positive charges so these negatively charged ions in our solution or our electrolyte will be pulled towards this anode because it is positively charged that's why we are saying that unlike charges attract the negative charges are moving towards the positive electrode in the same way, we shall see that even those positive charges, the positive charges will also be moving towards our negatively charged cathode. This cathode is negatively charged. It has more electrons than protons. So we shall see that the positively charged ions, after closing the switch, will now be moving towards our negatively charged cathode. That's why we say that the law of electricity takes place. So... That is the attraction between the electrodes and the ion begins. So our electrodes, at least we have seen that we have the anode and then we have the cathode. These are the two electrodes that we have. While our ions, we have the positively charged and the negatively charged. So the positively charged ions will move to the negative electrode, which is the cathode, while the negatively charged ions will move to the positively charged electrode which is the anode so the cathode will attract cations which are positive the cathode is negative negatively charged and the anode attracts anions so the positive electrode will attract the negatively charged ions and thus we shall say ion migration to the respective electrode will be occurring so that is the concept of the ionic theory close the switch first to complete the circuit 
then now some tension will be created between opposite charges the positively charged ions will move to the negative electrode which is the cathode while the negatively charged ions of this ionic compound in solution will move to a positively charged electrode which will be the anode so now we are going to look at some examples later on and see what we mean by this ionic theory using specific electrolytes say sodium chloride solution say sulfuric acid and so on so a memory aid sometimes it's challenging to know which ion goes to which electrode because we have cathode we have anode we have anion we have cation so here we have a memory aid that can help us remember the ion which goes to which electrode but if you are good to go and you know that the cathode is negatively charged so a cation which is a positive ion will go there it's good but we can say cut goes at cut cut at cut and an and at an so we mean cations go to the cathode meaning the positive charges go to the negative electrode and an we mean anions they go to the anode and anions we know they are negatively charged they go to the positive electrode so we are getting the an an and the cut cut obviously from the first letters yes cut cut then we have an an hopefully you can see this here local so an an cut cut it can help you know which ions go to which corresponding electrodes so the process of discharge so what happens when these ions go to the corresponding electrodes they will have to be discharged you know so the process of discharge when ions arrive at their respective electrodes they become discharged remember ions are charged to discharge is to remove the charge so they lose their charges and form what we shall call products so let us say sodium we are going to use only one example here sodium is our cation cut cut that means our sodium will go to our cathode which is negatively charged but at the negative electrode which is the cathode we have very many electrons that's why it's negatively charged so what happens it will pick an electron and then it will form a sodium atom so one thing you realize is that at first our sodium is charged because it actually has this positive charge but at the end it's a neutral atom it has no charge so that's why we shall be saying they get discharged and lose their charges the same applies to an anion that will go to the anode it will also lose its electron and it will become discharged anions will lose electrons at the anode and the cations will gain electrons at the cathode okay this is an example of the cation gaining electrons at the cathode however when you look at anions we shall have our chloride ion it will go to the anode and it will lose an electron so i don't like writing minus electron but for this case let us write it minus an electron this will form our chloride atom solid okay it won't be it won't exist on its own but let us just leave the state symbol to form our chloride atom so you will see that this charge will now be lost so we shall form something different however for the for this case we shall always need two processes of this kind so that we can form chlorine gas but we shall see what that means but this chloride anion will also lose its electron so that it becomes a normal atom of chlorine so that's what we mean by process of discharge you lose your charge that means you become an atom 
and you are no longer an ion. So we have seen that when ions move to their respective electrodes, they have to get discharged, meaning they have to lose their charges. So now we are going to focus at discharge at the cathode. Remember cathode is negatively charged, so we shall expect positive ions to get discharged at the cathode. So when cations reach the cathode, these are our positive ions, which is electron rich. Obviously the, cath the cathode is electron rich because it's negatively charged, or the other way around, it's negatively charged because it's electron rich. So when the cations strike the cathode, they pick electrons from the cathode equal to their charges. So let us say this is our cathode, this is our electrode connected to the negative terminal, so it has an overall negative charge. So if this is our cathode. So we shall find that when a cation comes and strikes this cathode, it is going to lose its charge because it will pick an electron from it. So we shall have an electron being picked by this cation. So let us take an example of a cation, let us say M2 plus, this is our cation, with a charge of 2. If it reaches the cathode, it will pick two electrons. So obviously here it's in aqueous form. And then it will become an atom. We shall have something like this. So the cation will pick electrons at the cathode and will become discharged. As you can see, M is an atom and it has no charge. So that's what we mean by discharged. Electrons neutralize the positive charge on the ion and turns back to atoms or atom. So our M, as you have seen, it becomes an atom and it's no longer in, in solution. So when metal cations become metal atoms, they are deposited on the cathode. For hydrogen, remember hydrogen is a bit tricky. For hydrogen, two atoms combine to form a molecule of hydrogen gas leading to colorless bubbles on the cathode. So actually hydrogen ions, when they reach the cathode, they will pick an electron to form hydrogen atoms. However, when these two, when two of these occur, these two will then combine to form our hydrogen gas. This is what they are trying to mean in this previous point here, except for hydrogen. But cations become metal atoms. At least we have seen here that our metal atom is a solid. If M is a metal, it gains the two electrons and then becomes an atom. So that's discharge at the cathode. Hydrogen, it's a debate whether it's a metal or a non-metal, so at least we can also talk about it at this point. Then lastly we have discharge at the anode. Our anode is our positive electrode. So negative ions will have to come to the anode when we close the switch. So when an ions arrive at the anode, which is electron deficient. Remember, this is positively charged because it's electron deficient. It has no electrons or it has less electrons. So these negatively charged ions will lose their excess electrons to the anode equal to their valences. Take an example. If maybe you have a negatively charged ion say x minus when it reaches the anode it will have to lose its electron minus one electron to form an atom of x i'll ignore the state symbol because it's a bit tricky because most of these nonmetals will actually be diatomic so that's what we mean by losing its charge so initially it's it has a negative charge, but at the end it has no charge. Usually here we have a change of state. So insoluble gaseous atoms form molecules and 
evolve as bubbles of a colorless gas seen at the lower end of the anode. So you have your anode posit positively charged. Then you have two negative ions coming towards it when we close the switch. So these two ions will actually be discharged. For example, if you look at the chloride ion, it will go and lose its electron to form the chloride atom. Just like in hydrogen, two of these will occur to form chlorine gas. They will then form molecules because in their free form, they usually exist as molecules. So that's how the discharge will take place from being charged to, to being uncharged. So that's what we call discharge. And usually we shall see them as insoluble. Because they are insoluble gases, we shall see them as bubbles of a colorless gas. So remember we are in an electrolyte, which is a liquid. So when these gases are formed, when a chlorine gas is formed, we shall see it as bubbles of a greenish yellowish gas. So at least we know chlorine is colored, so we shall see some bubbles of some greenish gas because gases in liquids will always be seen in form of bubbles. So that's some good summary of our ionic theory whereby we see the movement of different ions to their corresponding electrodes when the switch is closed. So in our next videos we shall try and look at some examples detailed examples on the ionic theory and we shall see mainly the common ones like electrolysis of water or acidified water electrolysis of dilute sulfuric acid copper to sulfate solutions and so on so thanks for watching if you have any question leave it in the comment section below don't forget to subscribe be well